Leomo, who are known for their motion sensor kits, are branching out and launching a new GPS head unit. Now, it's not just a bike computer, they're calling this the sports performance computer. In the last few weeks, I've been getting to know the ins and outs of this Android-based sports computer from the bike side of things. To kick things off, we'll jump over to the website for the Type S and have a look at all the specs before we get some hands-on with this unit. So we can see here, as of right now, there are 19 days, 19 hours for the Kickstarter to finish up. So it is Kickstarter. We'll have a look at that in a sec. But what you can see here is their head unit and their sensor kit. This is just the head unit I'm looking at, not the sensor kit. Scrolling down here, so Sports Performance Computer, they've got a video over on YouTube. I'll link to these websites below so you can click through if you're interested in that. They're looking at the hardware here. So it he's everything in your palm. Yep, confirmed, it is palm sized. It is extended battery cell, so it does come with an extended battery cell in the kit. Scrolling down and you can see it there performing as a bike computer. There's a multi-sport adapter, which is here, which is just a bit of a plate that can be an armband on the screen there. You can see what it's all about. Software wise, now here's where things get very, very interesting. It is an Android operating system, full Android compatible device on here. It runs the full Android operating system, not a cut down version, not a, an embedded system. This is a full Android phone. And I will be mentioning that quite a number of times throughout this video. So you can take texts and calls and emails. That's their special source app that is side loaded. You won't see that app in the app store, but that's what that comes on the unit. And scrolling down here, motion capture analysis capabilities with their sensor kit. So this really does go hand in hand with their sensor kit. Two Bluetooth chips, one for their sensor kit and one for other Bluetooth peripherals, uh, headphones as well, and watches. Ant Plus support for peripherals. And there's all the details there, which we'll cover in just a few moments. Quickly jumping to the Kickstarter to see where they're at. And they're fully funded. Uh, they only needed, this is in Aussie dollars, $36,000. They're at $74,000 and the product exists. I have one in my hand. That's a big up for being on Kickstarter to have that product before the Kickstarter even finishes. Uh, full details here, uh, USB-C charging, other specs there, Android 9, IPX7 waterproofing, a 13 megapixel main camera. I'll do a camera comparison later on with the iPhone that I have out in the road. Access to the Play Store. Again, we'll have a look at that. It's pretty cool. 110 grams claimed. We'll put that to the test and all the other details here. Now, pricing wise, over on the side, we can see their pledge, $359 US or more, and that's 20% off the $359 MSRP, so you save $90. I'm not sure whether the $359 is the MSRP or the discounted off the MSRP. Either way, Aussie dollars, we're looking there about $524, which I think is about ballpark now for high-end GPS units on bikes. Now, straight up, my take on this unit, as soon as I booted it up, was that it's an Android phone that has been adapted to the purpose of being a bike computer or fitness computer, because it does a few other things as well. Now, there's a few reasons behind why I say that, and I'm sticking to my guns on this one, is that the fact that it has two cameras, one front, one on the back, it has a little slot at the top, just like a phone. It has a little microphone down here, um, SIM card slot, and a light, this is not a bad thing at all. It just has a bit of an identity problem and I'm a bit conflicted about uh, what I'd classify this as. More on that later on. Let's have a closer look at this. So the Type S unit, the additional battery pack, piggyback battery pack, the multi-sport adapter and the camera mount. So Garmin compatible mount on the back of those and the unit itself is a flat back, so you will need to use one of those to get it on your bike. And to keep everybody happy, we'll have a look at the weight of these units. So main unit itself weighing in at 111. Let's try that again. I think it was claimed 110, wasn't it? So let's try, no, 111. The additional battery pack, 74. And the multi-sport adapter, I think was around 25, 26, 27. There we go. So there's the weights of the unit, not too far off spec. Covering the size comparisons, Type S there, Garmin Edge 830 there, Edge 1030 up there. So it's kind of in the middle. Well, and actually it is pretty much exactly in the middle. 
Okay, a closer look at the unit. We have power button on this side. We have the SIM card slot, if I can get that out. So SIM card and micro SD card slot for good measure if you need extra storage. On this side here, we have a button up here and up here. USB-C, how about that? I think it's the first unit I've seen with USB-C. And with the camera location there on the back, also with a light sensor and another camera down there on the front. So there we go. All right, enough talking. Let's get this thing booted up to see what it's all about. Okay, from the get-go, you can see it looks very much like a phone. I'll turn the brightness up as high as it can go. There we go. We've got adaptive brightness off. So straight away, I'm familiar with how it works because it is an Android phone. Swiping up, we have the Play Store, phone, photos, a lot of preloaded apps here. But first of all, we'll look at their app in particular, which is the special source, auto rotates. And by default, it goes to a darker screen here. We can go to configuration, edit any of the data pages within here. So from the bottom, we can scroll up and get to more options there. Activity log, data pages, menu. Uh, there's brightness settings for within their app. Their sensors, if you have those, and also other pairing. So I've had a power meter and a heart rate monitor paired to this unit. So back on that. Again, you can edit all the data pages as per normal. So there we go. And if we want to start a ride, we can just hit go. And away we go. Obviously, I'm not moving anywhere at the moment, so we'll have a look at this in a moment out on the road in use. But that's their app. So again, because it's Android, we can swipe to the side, minimize that app, or just throw it away. And we are back to the OS. As there's no navigation within the application, we can use Google Maps as long as we are connected. And you've just seen one of the issues I've come across, which is the auto rotation. It's just spun to... Uh, portrait mode here. So you can do offline maps, which is important if you don't have a SIM card on this to use offline maps. And we can get it to rotate back. So here we are, multi-pinch touch screen, and we have Ballarat and the surrounding areas. So if I scroll all the way out, you can see that's where I am in Australia. And we can use Google Maps as per normal. So if we want to go somewhere our location, say out to Creswick, which is one I did the other week. We want to cycle to Creswick. Not a lot of screen real estate on there, but we can get all, well, it's it's Google Maps. Everything we know. Okay, let's close that up. Now to take this to the next level, we'll go to the Play Store. And if you want to download games, apps, Call of Duty, anything that's compatible with this hardware will work in here. So my apps and games, I've installed a few. Oh, there's already some updates available. Here we go. So Google Drive, there's a Google update. Uh, recently installed, Zwift, Kinomap, and a few other things that I've been uh, playing around with on this unit. So again, it's a full Android phone and it does run Zwift. So let's have a quick look at Zwift running on this unit. <laughs> oh, sound down. There we go. Okay, so log in as me. We can pair devices. Let's have a look if it can see any at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure what I have. Here in the top room, no, nothing. Okay, so we're not in the Llama Lab. That would have uh, lit up. So let's go just watch for now. And uh, we'll see people riding on. Okay, here we go. Full Zwift running on this. Now, remembering for comparative size of this unit, there's the Garmin Edge 1030, and here's this little beast running Zwift. 
Um, we can give a ride on, or change camera angles. We'll give it's at night time, so we we need to find somewhere that's day. But we give a ride on here on the touch screen, and oh, it flipped back to us. Boo. Okay, it's a little dark at the moment because it is night time. But we'll give a ride on to this guy here. There we go, right on from me on this little tiny unit. So I'm scrolling through here. Oh, someone's going for a run. We'll hit ride, run on. We give them a run on at night there. Oh, chopper kicked in. Okay, that's uh, just what happens in those different modes. But yeah, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, uh, you will be able to run Zwift out on the road on your handlebars, just like you would on a phone racking up those XP points if you have a uh, power meter that can pair to it. Okay, enough fun for here, we'll close that out. Done, and we're back here. But we can also run, well, anything on here. I have Kinomap, so if you want to follow real-time videos as you're riding outdoors on the same course, maybe you can run a Kinomap on there. And there's also uh, Urban Biker. So if you don't want to use the Leomo app all the time, um, we can run Urban Biker, which is a Android-based cycle computer app, which appears to be pretty handy. So it says here about battery optimization, so we won't put that on just yet. But we have here maps, do different overlays. The maps when we're connected online. We can have all our stats. Oh, we can start the ride, or we can have different overlays on the maps as well. So Urban Biker and almost any other app I guess you can think of. You are limited to uh, the detail on the screen. There's a ton of detail there, but you are limited because of the screen size and resolution. But sky is the limit uh, when it comes to Android running on this. And it, who would have thought it runs Zwift? Amazing. Okay, let's show this in action out on the road. Okay, in the direct sunshine, nice contrast on the screen. Font's just a little bit too small. Responsive to the touch screen, you can see the scrolls there. Responding pretty quick. That's all good. It's a trendy thing to go on dirt. And come across a brand new family. I had to include this. These guys are so cute. So cute. Those guys are a long way from home. The lake is about 800 meters this way over a busy road, so. Okay, further out the road, in the canola fields and long, empty roads. It's always good to get out on the bike. And the data fields, all my stats on screen here. Scrolling across, there's a lap that I set. You can click on the lap and get all the details. A few empty fields there without the sensors hooked up. But the main one that I've been using here is the top graph. And you can see that if you touch that, it goes 1 minute, 5 minute, 10 and 20 and you can toggle on and off information on the screen, which is pretty cool to see in real time. So if I toggle my power on or off here, and then speed on or off, or cadence on or off, and heart rate. Anyway, I'm just sort of tinkering around the screens here to show you what's going on, but enough of that. Over to the fun stuff, we'll load up YouTube while we're out in the road and catch up with the latest news on, well, obviously, YouTube. And finally, out on the road, some photo comparisons between the 13 megapixel Leomo and the 12 megapixel iPhone XS. Under perfect conditions with the sunlight, but the photos are very comparable. Nice and crisp from the Leomo. And uh, in broad daylight, it takes a pretty good shot from the rear camera. Okay, so now more thoughts from me on this unit after having it on front of the bike for a few weeks. Now, before I begin, do realize that all of this could be changed, any of this could be changed with the next firmware update. And there has been an update to the software slash, so I'm a bit confused, is it software or is it firmware? It runs Android, so it's an app, it's software. So any of what I'm saying now could be updated in the very near future. And there was a significant update just the other day, halfway through all my testing with this. So just be aware that any of the criticisms or observations I have could definitely change. It's only ever one software update away from a different experience. However, for me, the screen is a little bit small. Out on the road, I, the first thing I did is unbox this, put it on the bike and rode. And 
I wasn't quite across exactly what every data field was and the labels on the data field this far away are just a little bit too small. Indoors, when you've got your nose on your uh, your head unit, you could read that no problems at all. But outdoors, when your focus is up the road, things are shaking around. It was a bit hard to be familiar with what's going on here out in the road. After a few rides, I became familiar with what the data fields were and it was all okay. It can also be difficult to use other apps while riding because of that auto rotation thing. That's probably an Android operating system thing rather than a Leomo thing. But I think there needs to be a sideloaded hack or something for the OS. So if you've got it in uh, landscape mode, it stays in landscape mode for everything. That way you can switch between apps without it doing this or this, or even sometimes it went upside down. So locking rotation can work, but it's still, yeah, that was a bit of a pain. I couldn't find auto pause. I had a few head units running at the same time and one would auto pause and this thing kept running. I couldn't find the auto pause option. Might have been just me. I've dived through the menus. I can't find it there. Another thing with non-support is Ant Plus Radar is not supported on this unit, nor is DI2. So I couldn't see my battery level or my gear changes. And more importantly, I couldn't see the information from my radar that was on the other units at the time. So radar integration with head units, I think these days is a must, especially for me and my riding. Onto the Bluetooth connectivity, and it doesn't Bluetooth connect to your phone, which is something I think everyone has been accustomed to with how units work at the moment. So if you have an Edge device paired straight to your phone over Bluetooth, you get messages, texts, everything. This becomes just sort of a an end leaf peripheral, I think. Think of a tree and a branch. This is an end leaf, and this is more of the tree. Yeah, that makes sense. This controls everything. The Leomo itself is a phone, so it takes the role of this. So you can put a SIM card in this and get connectivity out in the road, or you can Wi-Fi tether, but it just doesn't have that ability to take your texts from your main phone or anything. Maybe you could use WhatsApp or something like that. I use primarily Apple things for iOS, just for simplicity. You can see the Mac in front of me, it all works well. I also have an Android phone, but I don't have anything else linked up to that as my main system for messages and emails. So. Connectivity wise, I would love to see this be able to Bluetooth to a phone, which is sort of Bluetoothing a phone to a phone, but it would be nice to have the functionality to receive messages and emails, etc., as we'd expect and as we have become accustomed to with these units. Another observation was from the outset, you could tell this unit is meant to be with the motion sensors. It can be used as a standalone computer, bike computer or fitness tracker, I guess you'd call it. But there's a lot of data fields and configuration on here ready to go for the sensor kit. I was using it just as a bike computer and I had to customize those screens. The screens are fully customizable. A better user experience would have been a maybe a startup wizard where when you turn the unit on, it says, do you want this as just a bike computer or a running computer or something with or without sensors? And if you select without sensors, then it gives you a different set of default profiles on here. That would be a nice to have. For me, I got away with just changing all the screens manually. But again, that onboarding experience could be a little bit smoother. Over to battery life and today for a two hour ride with no SIM card or no Wi-Fi connectivity on this just as a head unit collecting data and about 50% screen brightness, 15% for two hours. So I think that's as per spec. If you're riding any more than that or for lengthy rides, you can go the additional add-on pack here, which also has a plug. So probably charging on the fly will work too. And lastly, as a phone slash bike computer, you'll need to remember to turn it off or put it to sleep mode because just like a phone left on the desk for two or three days, it will go flat because it is a phone. Unlike our other units where we either turn them off or put them to sleep mode where they'll sleep almost forever, this thing has phone capabilities and is a, f did I mention it was a phone? It's a phone. Okay, almost wrapping this one up for today and a lot of people have said over the past few years, why bother with a bike computer? Why not just put a phone on the front of your bike and be done with it? Well, Leomo did that, but not only did they do that, they took it to the next level by putting a Garmin compatible mount on there, writing their own app and away you go. It's a fully fledged Android phone. Getting Zwift up and running on this thing really showed the true capabilities and power of a system like this which has almost unlimited potential when it comes to software being loaded on it. Well, we saw Zwift load on it and actually work, plus YouTube, plus Kinomap, plus any other app you can think of. That was pretty cool. So in summary, I'm kind of torn about how I define what this is. If you look at it as a bike computer, it's a pretty neat bike computer and super powerful. If you look at it as an Android phone, it's a pretty crappy Android phone. But look, don't, don't get my read too wrong on that. It sits in this middle ground, which I think will make other manufacturers a little nervous about the potential of what this can do. That underlying OS, super powerful, and uh, yeah, being able to focus on the app alone without everything else, and being in control of the hardware. Oof. Anyway, that's been an interesting few weeks with this on the front of the bike. I think this is the beginning of 
where computers on bikes will pivot to. Um, that integration just needs to be a little bit more seamless though. Radar support, DI2 support, and Bluetooth over to your phone to stick with the legacy way of doing things. I think this could be pretty cool. As always, links below if you want to have a read up on their Kickstarter and the uh, the item. Again, this is not a sales pitch. They're already pre-funded. They're good to go. Um, if you end up with one of these or you've backed the Kickstarter, let me know what your experience is like. I'll keep an eye on the updates in the near future for this. All right, it's been a bit of fun. Thanks for watching. As always, hit subscribe to support this channel. It's much appreciated.